So we are going to listen today like the talk of Muhammad Adil. So just a, a little introduction. Um, he works on plant cell tissue cultures and also plant secondary metabolites uh, production. And uh, his postdoctoral experience from South Korea is killed him to work on hydroponic cultivation, somatic embryogen embryogenesis, plant phenotyping and stress physiology. And um, he was a visiting research scholar at the University of Copenhagen and worked there on tree somatic embryogenesis. He also he completed his PhD from Kwaid Ayasam University, Islamabad, and worked on adventitious root culture of Tuitania somnifera for sustainable production of ethanolids. So he's trained in somatic embryogenesis and clonal propagation of medicinal and horticulture plants. And today he's going to talk us about the production of medicinal compounds using plant cell tissue and organ culture. Um, well, we're very excited to hear you. Um, okay, so you can start, um, you already uh, shared the screen, so you can start with the, with the talk, Muhammad. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Roshio, for the nice introduction. And um, I thank the organizers for organizing this whole seminar series. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the production of high valued medicinal compounds using plant cell tissue in agriculture. This is just a generalized uh, title, um, but uh, I'll try to keep uh, Wetania seminifera uh, in this uh, presentation. Uh, this is uh, a general um, a graphical abstract of today's talk that uh, how we can exploit the cell cultures to produce the uh, industrially or medicinally important compounds. Um, so here they are for the production, uh, there are certain factors that affect the synthesis of uh, secondary metabolites in the cell uh, culture. So there are different uh, factors uh, like media type, plant growth regulators and pH of the media as well as the sucrose type, what kind of sucrose, uh, what kind of sugar you, will, uh, you are providing to the cultures. And also the lighting condition and the aeration rate, the temperature or other elicitors, uh, eliciting compounds that we feed into the media play important role to produce the secondary metabolites. So this is the abstract uh, uh, So the general introduction about uh, Wartania suminifera, you might all be familiar with this plant. Uh, it's called uh, Asgant winter cherry or uh, Kotilal in the local name, in the local uh, dialect. Uh, Solinaceae uh, in its origin. I might, I might be wrong with uh, this uh, origin um, and I would uh, be happy to get corrected about it. Uh, the most important part of this plant is its roots. Uh, it has a um, market, uh, it has a market price of 1.5 uh, US dollar per kg. Uh, locally, uh, we, the, far, the farmers grow them in their fields and collect the roots and then sell them out in the uh, market for the different Ayurvedic recipes preparations. And uh, just a, a generalized, uh, summarized view of the pharma, its pharmacological activities. The main uh, use of this plant is to cure the reproductive disorders, and it is used uh, for this purposes uh, here in this um, subcontinent. Uh, the other tested uh, pharmacological activities are its anti-cancer properties, immunological neuronal regeneration, anti-Alzheimer, and immunomodulatory and cardioprotective. The active component which uh, give them, uh, which have that medicinal properties are vitanolides uh, and alkalides, phenols, saponins, and others. And they, they, they are classified according to their groups. Uh, but uh, the most important part of this plant is vitanolides, and it is known for these compounds. 
and uh, people are uh, it hates the inverse electrification because of these compounds because the content of these compounds is higher in this species uh, while it can be found in other cellulosic species as well uh, just a general uh, overview about the cell uh, plant cell by synthesization and how it works. Uh, like uh, it, it starts from the glucose and then converted it to fructose and take the different pathways, um, MEP pathway or mevalonate pathway and chicinate pathway or pentose phosphate pathway that gives us the important compounds which have the medicinal value and uh, industrial applications. So the, uh, the, why we have to synthesize them using the plant cells, uh, because uh, it's, the wet and light structure is very complex. Uh, it takes from the very simple compound like isopentanyl pyrophosphate and then converted it to a more complex uh, having the isoprene units uh, to synthesize vethanolide and there are different kinds of vethanolides, vethanolide A, B and so on. Um, so the, 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 its synthesis is very complex uh, if we want to synthesize it using the chemical uh, you know, procedure so it's not easy. Uh, also, it's going to be very expensive, and so that's why we used to. Uh, that's why I was trying to explore this uh, method um, to use the plant cell difficulty technology. And um, they are like uh, they are the genetic engineering uh, methods uh, have also uh, eased the process like um, some other simple compounds they have been synthesized or engineered inside the microbes uh, like they have cloned all the pathway in E. coli and then cultured them in big tanks and, and they got the target compound but here in this case what the, the, the complex structure and in, uh, in involvement of a lot of uh, enzymes to catalyze the reactions so this, that's why it's not easy to have them cloned in an E. coli cell or in yeast cell. So that's why uh, it is important to explore the alternative uh, method. Uh, this is the uh, generalized uh, by synthesis pathway for the vitanolides. So it takes uh, the two uh, sides of the cells like cytosol and plastid. And be, uh, it is synthesized on both uh, melanate and non melanate pathways, MET pathways. Uh, so from acetyl, it starts from the acetyl-CoA and then converting it to the IPP, uh, indole uh, isopentanyl pyrophosphate, and then converting it to cyclos Aretinol and then to the other uh, classes of the respective compounds. So here I have mentioned the four or, or, uh, different enzymes that are catalyzing uh, the reaction and they are important to synthesize the retinolides. So it, it will be a very good strategy to clone, uh, to enhance the uh, synthesis of these enzymes in the cells to catalyze, to switch the pathway or switch the carbon flux toward the synthesis of white anolides. Uh, again, um, a general concept that I have used in this study is uh, normally in the environment, secondary metabolites are synthesized in the plant against some sort of stress. So that stress can be uh, microbes or some other environmental um, stresses like uh, uh, heat stress or drought stress. So to combat this, so the plant have that immune system to combat the stress conditions. So uh, in response, the plant synthesize these uh, secondary metabolites and sec in secondary metabolites, these with vitanolides plays important role to overcome on these hard conditions. So this is just a generalized uh, concept of my study that how it works. 
So we took this uh, stress phenomena and applied it in the tissue culture um, study and um, then we got some uh, interesting results that I'll show you. Uh, there's some problems with the medicinal plant cultivation uh, here we, that we face is uh, here in Pakistan and in India. I think it is throughout the world because the population is growing rapidly and the uh, arable land is declining. Uh, so we don't have enough space to cultivate the medicinal plants. So that's why I thought it would be very good to have this alternative approach instead of um, harvest, uh, instead of cultivating on acres of lands, we can do that just in a single room or a small building. Uh, uh, in the, the other major problem that with the medicine plant cultivation is poor agronomy knowledge. So we don't know about the requirement how to cultivate a specific plant and what kind of condition we have to provide them to grow them. And that's because the total uh, focus of research is on the food security and food thing, so the cereal crops. That we need uh, a lot of, that, that we need more uh, to survive, and uh, also the medicinal compounds content varies with the environmental condition. Like um, at the high altitude, uh, the medicinal compounds have a different uh, um, amount, and at the lower altitude, it has a different uh, amount. Because uh, as I said, that. Uh, um, the stress uh, plays an important role. And uh, the other thing is higher market demand. Uh, and also there is a problem of adulteration and uh, poor soil fertility and costly fertilizer and pesticides. Uh, its production is not economical or profitable for the farmers. So farmers would never like to cultivate medicinal plants uh, instead of uh, cereals. Why uh, plant tissue culture? So it is a continuous production system, defined good manufacturing practice uh, and higher secondary metabolized content, uh, easy downstream processing and green factory. Uh, it is rec uh, recognized as a green factory because it doesn't produce a lot of waste. Uh, if we go uh, going to synthesize them through the chemistry pathways or the chemistry things, so it's going to take a lot of solvents and a lot of reagents uh, to, to synthesize this complex compound. So that's why it has been recognized as a green factory. So different types of cultures, uh, and these all different types of cultures um, uh, having different uh, benefits and uh, different uh, disadvantages. Uh, adventitious root culture, callous culture, and cell culture. Um, for Botania somniferae, I'm very much interested with the adventitious root culture because uh, in the market, uh, it's uh, the roots, uh, Vatania Sumilifera roots are sold out in the market and has a, a value. And also it has been studied, reported that um, Vatania, the Vatanolite content is higher in its roots uh, than its aerial parts. So uh, with the callus culture, there's a big problem to subculture them again, again, again. So it takes a lot of uh, energy and a lot of resources to cult subculture them after every four weeks. So uh, uh, people, people or the, for the industrial application, it is not so good. Uh, but uh, the, for the industrial application, these, the adventitious root culture and cell cultures are desirable. Uh, but the problem is it needs to be studied uh, thoroughly to find out what are the media components that regulates the plant cell growth 
and also the synthesis of the secondary metabolites and these the, the adventitious root culture and the cell suspension culture are easy to handle. Uh, you have to just uh, remove the used media and fl uh, flush the new media uh, to grow them um, continuously. Before going further in depth uh, to use the um, tissue culture um, technology for the retaining sinifera, uh, we have studied uh, these uh, different kind of uh, media. Um, GLI, these are the just arbitrary names, GLI, uh, SOM, MS, and SH. These are the normally SH and MS media are the normally available media in the market and most often used in the tissue culture. But then we try, we modified the composition of these uh, different uh, nutrients. And uh, so uh, we, to, we were trying to increase the biomass as well as the secondary metabolite. But uh, um, here I would like to mention that uh, it's not easy to get uh, the biomass as well as the secondary metabolite. So still it needs thorough study to find out what are the component of the media which plays the role to switch the pathway toward the vitaminolides uh, by synthesis. Uh, these are the uh, callous cultures that, I, that we um, got on these different uh, medias. Uh, so if we look to the first uh, sort of photo pictures, uh, picture that I have named as A, so it has a larger biomass than the other one. They are just small, tiny um, bulge out growth. Uh, so I was more interested in the media that I call GLI media. GLI media, it is this one. Uh, that has the lower nitrate content and higher, um, and uh, also the potassium phosphate. And if we look at the calcium chloride, so like these, all the nutrient component plays very important role. That's why we need uh, to study them all to see the effect on the cell growth. Uh, this is uh, just. Um, to show you that uh, um, we uh, obtained some uh, interesting result. Uh, on GLI media, we got 14.36 uh, gram uh, of callus, uh, while on the M Mor Mauritius, Koj media, MS media, and SH media, they had just very low compared to the GLI media. So for the further studies, we use this uh, media because uh, in the industrial application, biomass also plays a very important role. If uh, we have a high biomass, so then we can say that we can get the higher secondary metabolite, but it is always not uh, true that if we have higher biomass, so then we will have the higher secondary metabolites. Still, there are other factors that we have to find out and modify them accordingly. So uh, for the retainer seminifera, uh, when we optimized the medium composition for the callus growth, so the next step was to uh, establish the cell suspension culture and study the cell kinetics because cell kinetics, uh, cell growth kinetics is very important for uh, the production point of view. Uh, and also to devise the other strategies. Uh, so we find out that uh, uh, after 20, 18 days of uh, culture, uh, the callus profilation was uh, uh, increasing uh, rapidly. And uh, uh, so we marked that uh, time that oh, it needs that much time to adjust with the media. And then it uh, takes the um, acceleration to proliferate um, uh, with higher rate. These stages are important to be studied and helpful to determine the time frame of cell growth and suspension. Uh, these are the photos how the cell suspension looks like and then the um, 
compact cell volume uh, in the figure F. Uh, the other, um, like uh, to, the, to the total talk, the, the talk is about the different strategies, like uh, how we can increase the signal of light. Uh, so for that, for, for, for that, there are different factors that are important to be selected or uh, important to be studied. So the, one of the important factor uh, is the plant growth regulator. Because uh, in the artificial media, in vitro media, uh, if we don't provide the um, growth regulator from the outside, it will, uh, it will not proliferate, it will just stay there and die. Um, even uh, it has the capacity to synthesize its own hormones, but they are in low amount and uh, that will be not sufficient for accelerated growth in for the production point of view. Uh, it needs an accelerated growth. Uh, so selection of uh, plant growth regulator and explant is very crucial in the tissue culture studies. So um, here um, in this um, study, we found uh, out that uh, the, if we look at, uh, we selected two different kinds of explants, uh, root and stem. Uh, the selection of root was because uh, in the market uh, or in, in the reported in the literature, it says that Vitaneus Vitaneus unifera roots has the high amount of vitamins. So uh, the choice was to use the root because root has the highest signal metabolite. But there are different views, um, and, uh, but uh, in general, uh, we were hypothesizing that. Uh, roots may have certain enzymes uh, that uh, catalyze the process. So that's why we need these uh, cells like from the root to have the, the gene or, or to have the expression of these genes uh, to catalyze the process to synthesize the return lines. Uh, but uh, uh, and luckily we were lucky that root uh, also showed the high rate of proliferation as you can see the roots uh, proliferating uh, the callus growth is higher than the stem. Uh, plant uh, then uh, also um, these so the next slide is about like why explant so here like um, an example of another species Cinelium officinalis there were this was another st study uh, where uh, we, in this study, we compared the root and shoot uh, of the scenario of scenarios to see the second of blood profile. Uh, and uh, in this case, the stem had, uh, the stem was showing higher, stem was showing higher total phenol content compared to the root, and, but the total flavonoid content was higher compared to the root. So this was, uh, I included this slide just because to give you the idea that uh, uh, the explant also play a role to synthesize the second uh, metabolites. Then uh, I have mixed up a lot of experiment here in this uh, presentation just to give you an idea how the tissue culture process works to produce the secondary metabolites. So one of the strategy, like as I mentioned earlier in the first uh, second slide that uh, light also plays a very important role. So uh, we here in this um, uh, study, we use different uh, wavelengths of lights like, like red, blue, and then dark, and then the white light, the normal light that we uh, use. And also we use the mix uh, like red and blue to see if it has some kind of an effect on the cell growth. And uh, from this study, we found that the red light was uh, supportive for the higher uh, biomass production. Uh, <clears throat> I have not included all the data here, but it's just a general uh, overview. Uh, uh, 
Uh, there, there is a, another strategy uh, like uh, elicitation, a strategy to increase the second limited lives. Uh, here, I have uh, to mention that uh, I was targeting only phenols and flavonoid uh, in, in this experiment. That's why uh, I have <laughs> sidelined the vitamolites. Uh, but uh, they, these are the part of the secondary metabolites, so that's why I was focusing on these as well. And it also has a very industrial application, especially in the cosmetic industry. So uh, elicit elicitation, uh, a strategy to increase the secondary metabolite, it is a, stra a strategy in which we use some elicitors, some kind of elicitor. Uh, elicitor could be a signaling molecule, uh, or it can be uh, some kind of stress from the outside, like if we increase the pH of the media, or increase the temperature of the media, or increase the carbon dioxide flux into the culture. So the, 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 there are so many different uh, uh, strategies. Uh, but uh, mostly I was working with the signaling molecules because they play a very important role uh, in plant immunity. And due to these signaling molecules, plants uh, switches the, uh, switch on the defense uh, mechanism. So I was using two molecules, uh, methyl jasmonate and salicylic acid. I was uh, uh, feeding these two uh, elicitor molecules to study the phenols and phenolite profile in the cell culture. So methyl jasmonate uh, was helpful to increase the phenol uh, content, while the salicylic acid, salicylic acid uh, was favorable for the flavonoid uh, content. So um, it still needs why it does so, uh, why these two molecules have the different uh, responses. So um, still we need to find out uh, maybe there must be some genes behind uh, uh, these uh, variations. So we have still, I'm trying to study them out. What are the factors? And uh, here, the, 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 another example of adventitious root culture, like uh, um, here in this experiment, we started from a uh, leaf explant as uh, a portion of a leaf and culture it on the media to get uh, roots instead of callus. Uh, and adventitious roots, uh, by definition, are the roots which appears from uh, unusual parts of the um, plant. So um, the first uh, was to induce the roots and for the induction, I was uh, um, uh, applying different uh, auxins. Uh, we have different kind of auxin like endol butyric acid, endol acetic acid, methylene acetic acid. So I tested these three and these three um, worked differently. And, uh, um, but in this case, indol, indol butyric acid was uh, favorable to induce the adventitious root from the leaf explant. And then I removed the leaf part and cultured them uh, in this liquid medium to further proliferate and um, enhance its biomass. So this is maintaining root growth in liquid medium needs proper pro proportion of nutrients and PGR concentrations. So um, I was uh, trying to optimize them uh, and uh, increase the uh, biomass. The whole presentation is based on the um, flask culture. So it's just a hundred uh, milliliter uh, container and hundred milliliter of media. So um, still like it is a kind of preliminary study and uh, it needs to be scaled up to the um, uh, industrial level need to have some bioreactors to culture them uh, for you know, getting more bulks of the roots. So uh, I would like to conclude it here that uh, need to establish a vertical culture like uh, callus cultures are important to get the cell suspension culture uh, because 
if you don't have the Kailas culture, it's not possible to get the silt culture. So Kailas is the baseline. So most of the work that starts from the Kailas, so actually the Kailas is the first step toward uh, the next. Uh, in argon culture, like adventitious root culture, uh, uh, in hairy root culture, uh, but uh, due to some ethical uh, constraints, hair root culture is not desirable for the industrial application because it being considered as the genetically modified uh, material. So getting the permission from the authorities is not easy. So that's why I was more interested in the nutritious root culture to get uh, the biomass of this plant. Uh, if it is any medicinal plant, I have been working with the uh, Celebum marianum and um, the, the other uh, the ginseng uh, and Cinerium officinale. Most importantly, scaling up from lab, like uh, in lab, you can just handle up to 1000 ml. Uh, so it's it really important to scale it up to the pilot scale, like taking it up to the 100 liters, uh, more than 100 liters. Uh, need further uh, understanding of its bisynthetic pathway because the um, withinolide bisynthesis pathway is still not clear. We don't uh, know how the different kind of uh, withinolides are synthesized in the plant. To control the carbon flux, flux in the culture, and genetic engineering using the synthetic biology approach. Uh, also, it is important to uh, keep in mind the bioreactor design. There are different type of bioreactors uh, that I have not mentioned it here, but there are different kind of uh, bioreactor uh, and plant uh, cultures uh, act differently to these different designs. So I acknowledge the Higher Education Commission for their support and also the Byung-Song National University and Kalyazam University of Islamabad. Uh, and I'm really thankful to you all for being here with me and for your precious time. I thank you. These, these are just uh, uh, some, uh, some pictures of my locality where I live, uh, some biodiversity of this region, and the chair tomato from the hydroponic system that I was working with. And thank you. Any question or any suggestion that I could uh, work on to improve it further? Hey, thank you very much. I'm really sorry for the noise in the background. Oh, don't worry. Yes, it's common with the kind of yes, all the virtual uh, talks. There's always some background noise. So don't worry. Thank you very much. That's a very interesting talk, and yes, yeah, has been great. And yes, we're open for questions. So if you want to um, ask some questions to Muhammad through the chat, or you can turn on your microphone and ask the questions directly. And I'm really sorry that I was not that good uh, at the presentation <laughs> because it's always not easy to give a talk from home, uh, uh, hearing a lot of noises in the background. So it was difficult for me to focus on. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if I was at the workplace, then I might be better, I think. <laughs> Okay, so be free to ask questions or... You could do, I, I have a question. Um, so I'm interested in, um, so when you make the calluses, you say you can put them in different medium and then you'll get different con, like chemical components, right? Is that correct? Is that what happens? Um. Just to clarify. <laughs> um, yeah, will you rephrase it again? I'm sorry. Um, so it's like when you are tissue culturing and you grow it in different mediums, you, when you do your yeah. like chemical extractions, you can find different chemicals, right? So if you have yes. more pH, yeah. okay. Yeah. Is, do you find that in yeah. like nature? Yeah. Like 
if you just like went and you collect different populations, would you find a lot of different variation within chemical compounds? Um, yeah, uh, there are there are um, reports that exist in the literature, and I could share the articles, and uh, they have identified that uh, the population uh, based variation in the chemical composition. Uh, there was a study um, uh, back there in India, and they were uh, collecting uh, from different. Uh, they were collecting the plants from the different locations, and uh, interestingly, they were. Uh, they found that, uh, and they have reported that uh, they have a significant variation of the uh, compounds. So in nature, it does exist. That's why they are chemo. They are another term they used is chemotypes. It's chemo what? Have okay. Chemotypes. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what it's yeah. called when it has different. I did not know that. That's cool. Yeah. So they call it chemotypes, and they exist in the nature. So will people like oh never collect stuff? that is like on the roadside or anything like that do like people make a point to grow it in like a specific garden plot and maintain it for uh, those reasons he, yeah here in pakistan uh, this this is very unfortunate that the farmers uh, don't show any interest in these uh, medicinal plants and this plant normally grows wild and uh, the locals go out in the forest and collect them and sell them out to the locals in the local market. But to meet the market demand, uh, they buy it from India or from China because in India and in China, they have the, the proper cultivation system for these medicinal plants. And um, there was a study uh, where they, have, they, they were cultivating these plants on their fields in different locations, as I mentioned earlier. And they were also reporting that uh, cultivating them in different localities uh, were showing different composition of the secondary metabolites. Uh, composition is not the correct word, but I will say the amount was varying. The amount of uh, the metabolites or the compounds was varying with the environmental conditions. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Here we have a, a question uh, of Stacy Smith. So yeah. she said that um, maybe this was already mentioned, but she wonders how much withanol production varies across varieties, uh, how the variety was selected for tissue culture. Oh, for this uh, study, it was, as I um, said to you earlier, that it was uh, just a random um, selection. Uh, but actually, if uh, someone is going to, uh, like, uh, yeah, it needs a proper selection. It has to be selected properly or buy uh, the seeds from the um, registered or uh, registered vendor. Okay, and she also yeah. has another question about if it, you do, do you think if the results could be transferable across species? And actually, I was also thinking about that. If you know that these kind of results have been tried with this kind of media, for example, like if the GLI media could be good for other Solanaceae or for other closely related species, like uh, Withania coagulans, uh, do you know if that has been? Uh here, here I would like to mention that uh, uh, tissue culture is not an easy task. Uh, and uh, if uh, we say that Mauritius Scrooge media or GLI, we take a GLI media. So um, it's not 100% guaranteed that it will work for the related species like Withinia covalence. So in my opinion, I'm not able to say or claim that this uh, media will also work for the um, other species like uh, Watania coccolens. So it is a continuous process to study it. And um, the most uh, 
my professor back there in Copenhagen University, he told me that uh, he was uh, doing uh, his project on Christmas trees uh, propagation. And he told me that uh, the most important step for the tissue culture is first to study the soil composition of the respective plant where uh, like um, uh, the, the original site where the plant grows normally. So you have to go and check the soil, what kind of nutrients uh, are there for that plant. So based on that uh, profile, uh, you can modify your media and go on for the tissue culture. That's very interesting. Yeah, the soil could be very important. And I wonder also about that, like probably in different seasons, there is different production, the amount of ethanolids that could be produced by the, the same population. Is the season affecting like the- above? Yes, yeah, yeah. The season also has the effect. Uh, I agree with that, yeah. Uh, if uh, um, uh, one of the, also one of the factor is also if there are so many rains in a year, uh, so then it's not easy to get the, to get the um, target res targeted results. If there are so many rains, <laughs> like um, this year there have been a lot of rain in India and in Pakistan, so uh, a lot of uh, a lot of um, crops uh, did not had uh, um, efficient yield or the sufficient yield this year. Uh, we have the, the orchard of apricot, and it was too much raining this year, so we didn't get any apricot. Because the fl uh, it was raining during the flowering season, so all the flowers just fall out or didn't get the pollens. Wow. So the season has the role. Yeah, it's true. Um, thank you. Yes, and uh, here we have also a question up, uh, from Joyce Vanek. I don't know if you, uh, you want to turn on your microphone as yourself or. Joyce, are you there? Yep. Okay, yep, just, just got it. <laughs> Hi, um, thanks for the presentation, Mohammed. I, um, it really interesting, especially with my being, you know, in the tissue culture and, and uh, seeing the callus. I was, I was curious as to whether you have any specific with analytes in mind for production, you know, because there's so many different ones that have been reported for medicinal applications. And I wondered if you're at the point knowing which one or ones would be of most importance. Uh, yeah, uh, I was targeting uh, Y-thanolide A and Y-thanolide B. You're right there. There's different kind of uh, Y-thanolides. Mm -hmm. And and uh, why was the decision to select those? Side. Are those the most important medicinally? Yeah, they they are the most important in medicinally. With an allied A and with an allied E, it has the anti-cancerous properties. So, because of that, uh, I was targeting them. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I would like to mention it here that uh, during my PhD, I didn't hear had enough uh, funding, so that's why I was uh, not able to go for the uh, molecular work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it needs the molecular studies mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. uh, to find out the mechanism uh, behind the production. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this must be very, yeah. These are the chromatograms, uh, mopinamide, vetanolide Q, vetanoferrin A, and vetanocide 4 and Ten or ten, so these I was these uh, I was able to detect uh, in my extract in my cultures. Okay. And uh, here I would like to mention that uh, I was uh, I was uh, getting to study these compounds just because I was able to detect to, de to detect them according to my method. I was able to detect them. That's why I was uh, mentioning them. Uh, in my research. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. 
and also uh, uh, also the standards they are very expensive so uh, that's why i was relying yes we know we're as yes, we're looking with analyze it is um yeah they are quite expensive <laughs> they are quite yeah. expensive <laughs> Okay, um, I also have a, another question about, um, you were mentioning that you try different lights to increase the, the amount of biomass that you were producing. Um, and you found that red light was producing more biomass. Do you know why that kind yeah. of and not others? Oh, let me go back to that slide. So. So I will just uh, say in general that uh, actually, as I mentioned earlier, that due to some funding constraint, I was not able to go into uh, the detail of why. But uh, from the literature, I was able to get the answer that uh, there are some um, receptors that exist on the plant cell, like PIF, TFS, etc that activation of these are due to the phytochromes. Phytochromes, uh, these are the sensory um, um, re receptors <laughs> that receives the signal from the light and then convert it to the PIF tips and activate the other uh, the machinery of the cell. So <laughs> I, I was not in depth of this study. Okay. So from this, from this, it looks like you either get callus growth and biomass or you get these secondary metabolites. Is it either or uh, is it both? It is both. Okay. okay. In my study, it was both. But uh, from my point, from the study, uh, my conclusion is that they vary. If we increase the biomass, so the metabolites will decrease because if cell is uh, proliferating rap rapidly, so it will just go on to synthesize its own uh, structural components instead of going into the um, secondary metabolite by synthesis. The structural components like it will synthesize the cell wall and uh, cell membrane and things like that. Do you think there's? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So the focus of the cell will be just on the um, uh, division to multiply. Is there competing genes within the different secondary metabolites? Like, do flavonoids compete with with thanioids, or is it pretty pretty separate within their pathways? Actually, uh, I don't know. I don't know. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm looking for some kind of uh, uh, position where I could uh, study the molecular uh, side of the tissue culture. So I'm really into that. And I'm keen to go on toward the molecular mechanism. So you are right. There must be some kind of competition, competing genes. Did you see that in your uh, your graph that you showed earlier? You just showed like peaks of with annuoids, but can you like extract like the flavonoids at the same time and see like oh, there's a decrease in flavonoids and an increase in with annuoids, or is there not like a yeah. correlation? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, the extraction of a compound depends on the polarity level. Uh, so phenol. Phenols and flonides have different polarity than the withanolides. Uh, so uh, if um, you want to extract a targeted uh, compound, you have to go and study its polarity and use the specific uh, polar solvent to extract them and then do the HPLC. So like you have to extract for a specific thing is what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by like the polarity? Okay, so it's like you're specifically extracting for with annuoids. Uh, if uh, we're going to extract the phenols and uh, flavonoids, uh, then we have to use the um, uh, methanol with the water. Okay. So it, it will take all the compounds that are soluble in the methanol as well as in water. So there are certain flavonoids 
which are soluble in water, and there are certain uh, phenols or flavonoids which are soluble in methanol. So the methanol and the water uh, solvent extraction uh, will give you more good results compared to the other one. So like, they, these are all the extreme. Water is more polar than the methanol. Oh, I see. OK. <laughs> That's helpful. Thank you very much for that very yeah, detailed explanation. I don't know if there are other, any other questions for Muhammad. OK. I don't see any other on the chat. Um, OK, if not, so we are finishing the seminar. Um, thank you very much for this great talk, Muhammad, and thank you everyone for coming. Um, next week, next Friday, we are going to be um, listening again about Soleinum, actually, because Xavier Abspriot uh, will present about uh, taxonomic revision of the tropical Asian spiny Soleinum. So see you next week. Um, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mohamed. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.